And we begin tonight with the fight over furlough shaping up at City Hall. Good evening, everybody. I'm Terry Owens. Baltimore needs to trim its budget to offset millions in cuts at the state level, and that means furloughs for city employees. But police and firefighters are saying not so fast. We've got contracts and a deal's a deal. ABC 2 News Roosevelt Left, which joins us now with more on their beef with the city. It made the New York Times bestseller list before its release. Today, Sarah Palin's book, Going Rogue, hit bookstores across the country. Good evening, everybody. I'm Terry Owens. Ironically, as ABC2 News' Jeff Hager reports, the darling of the Republican Party who resonates in red states has found plenty of fans in this blue state of Maryland. And we've got some breaking news now from Baltimore. Police have found the body of a woman behind a home on the 1000 block of East Eager Street. Police say the woman appears to be between 20 and 30 years of age and appears to be the victim of a sexual assault. ABC 2 News has a crew on the scene and we will bring you more information on this story just as soon as it develops. Now the latest on the devastation in Dundalk. It has been three days since a huge water main break flooded parts of the community. And coming up on ABC 2 News at 6, who should take the blame? for that massive water main break. What's the city's liability in all of this? ABC 2 News' Jeff Hager goes in search of some answers. And we've got some breaking news to tell you about now from Baltimore County. Police tell us a man was shot just a short while ago in a parking lot of an apartment complex in the 1400 block of Wentworth Avenue. That's in Parkville. Police and medics are on the scene. No word yet on the man's condition. Stay with ABC2 News and ABC2News.com for the latest on this breaking news. Well, we all want to feel secure in our homes, so the idea of a free alarm system can sound pretty good. But as ABC2 News' Josie Sturman explains, door-to-door -door sales that ask you to sign up on the spot may lock you down longer than you think. Mary Beth, the wind is picking up, but so far the damage has been minimal. Now, we did have one report of a tree down over on King George. We're told it took a power line with it, but here along the city dock in Annapolis, everybody's waiting for the next high tide. With the rain from Ida still coming down and nor'easter winds picking up, boaters like Russell Levi are bracing for a long night. When they say it's going to crest and it's finished, what I've learned is don't stop looking and, and be vigilant. That vigilance can be seen around the Annapolis City Dock tonight. City workers brought out the sandbags earlier today, and tonight they're lined up outside businesses in low-lying areas. There's really not much else you can do to try and to try and keep the water out, really. I guess a little worried just because of the winds I saw on the news today with Ocean City and Bethany, all the storm surge, and uh, basically I think the wind is a little nerve-wracking. The next high tide is expected around 3.30 this morning. While the water is expected to crest the dock, Many here know how to take storms like Ida in stride. Everybody overreacts a little bit. It'll be there'll be some people out because it'll, it's a storm. It gets everybody psyched up. Storm party, but uh, I don't think we'll have anything as far as uh, water coming in the building too much. Still, city officials and the harbor master are taking every precaution. We worry about the people getting to and from their boats, and mm -hmm. of course we're also going to have to turn off the electricity on the bulkhead tonight uh, if it does actually come up that high so that we don't have any electrical hazard. This was all rebuilt just a few years ago. It's a lot stronger, and uh, they did a great job, so it's a lot more reliable. A lot more reliable, but again, everybody watching the high tide that's coming up here now in just a few hours. And actually, Norm says the high tide tomorrow afternoon could actually cause even more trouble here along the city dock in Annapolis. Reporting live from Annapolis, Terry Owens, ABC2 News. Terry? Mary Beth, the program was actually created by a man who lost his son in a single car crash. And so far, it's had an amazing run of success. In tonight's inaugural class, 14 students and one very brave ABC2 News intern. It's the first of its kind program in the state of Maryland. The first thing we want to teach the students is... It's called Collision Avoidance Training, or CAT. The rigorous 12-hour program targets 16- to 19-year-old drivers in Howard County and promises to teach them how to handle their vehicles in any situation. I've seen a lot of collisions just in the parking lot at my school, and I'd really like to not have to call my dad and tell, me that I was, tell him that I was involved in one that I could have avoided. My parents thought it would be a good idea for me to like learn how to do things if your car swerves and learn how to control it. Along with four hours of classroom instruction, you say there's no such thing as an accident. The 
The program includes eight hours on an obstacle course. We put ABC2 News intern Jessica Klein to the test. More comfortable for you. But up, shuffle, you're crossing over again. Use the whole stand, pick up your speed a little bit. Just minutes into her session, Jessica is learning just how much she doesn't know about shuffle steering. Just don't tell me you never cross over. <laughs> not anymore. Um, we're not teaching them how to drive, but we want to teach them how to avoid a collision. Howard County brought the program from Delaware thanks to funding from the Howard County Police Fund. The cost for each participant, $195. But with collisions, the leading cause of death among teen drivers, county police think it's money well spent. No one who has attended this program has ever uh, died in a collision or been significantly injured in a collision. So we're hoping we can keep that trend going. Do you think that now, Howard County Police say they hope to have at least one more class before the end of the year. After that, they say they'll schedule the classes as the demand calls for. Reporting live from Howard County, Terry Owens, ABC2 News. Tonight, John Allen Mohammed is sitting on death row in Virginia. Among those planning to witness the execution, relatives of some of the people killed in those sniper attacks. During the three-week sniper crime spree, people in Virginia, D.C., and Maryland lived in fear. For many, a simple trip to the gas station was unnerving. I remember thinking, w when you get out to go to the gas stations, like, is this my day? Is this it? The whole city was pretty much uh, uh, in, in a big shock because of that particular situation. The sniper victims included men, women, and children. Seven years after the 2002 attacks, Mohammed, the convicted mastermind, is now just hours away from death. He was sentenced to die for the murder of Dean Myers, a 53-year-old engineer and Vietnam veteran who was gunned down at a Manassas filling station. His brother spoke during the trial. A number one guy in so many ways, and he's sorely missed. We heard about it. It, was, it made the Italian papers, and we, it was unbelievable. And then he wasn't caught, and he kept killing more people. With the Supreme Court now refusing to block the execution, Mohammed is set to die by lethal injection. Only clemency from Virginia Governor Tim Kaine can spare his life, and the governor has said he will not intervene. I don't believe in the death penalty. Um, I do believe that vengeance is the Lord's. Didn't he have to put a hole in the trunk of the car, and he had the underage 17-year-old? You know, I mean, you can't get any more premeditated than that. Attorneys for Mohammed continue to argue that he is mentally ill and that his life should be spared. Again, his execution is scheduled for tomorrow night. Mohammed's accomplice, Lee Boyd Malvo, is serving a life sentence. That's Mary right. Beth. For many people, I know this will be the final conclusion. Oh, I put it on my Facebook and Twitter tonight. It lit up with people responding where they were, the kind of fear they felt. It is back. Dancing with the Stars will heat up your living room with the largest cast ever this season. Get this, there are six celebrity contestants and it starts tonight with a live three night event. You can catch all the shakes and spins tonight right here at 8 on ABC2. Well, big changes to Maryland's DUI laws. Details on ABC2 News at 6, which starts right now.